one of the biggest arguments against grains, wheat especially, is that it's genetically modified and it's sprayed with glyphosate or other desiccants. Thus, we just need to avoid wheat altogether. Now, I've already done a video all about wheat not being genetically modified, but in this video, we're gonna uncover the truth about the whole glyphosate desiccant, is wheat sprayed with all this, what are we to do, so on and so forth. <music> Welcome back to Grains of Grit. My name is Felicia and on this channel we talk about real whole grains from a biblical perspective and more. Now I've done many many videos now is where I talk about you know that it is not the wheat that's been messed with but it's the flour or how we should be milling our wheat and the importance of all of that and all the things. Um, a common comment that I receive is basically to this extent. Modern wheat is bad because it's sprayed with glyphosate or all wheat is sprayed with glyphosate, so we shouldn't be eating it. Something along with glyphosate. People have been told that wheat has been sprayed with glyphosate and that people don't actually have a gluten issue necessarily, they have a glyphosate issue. So in this video, we're just gonna kinda quickly uncover the truth to actually know what the truth is about glyphosate and our grains, uh, predominantly here in the United States, but also in other countries as well. Because especially in this day with social media, uh, buzz phrases kind of get thrown around and so this is a video to actually dive into the truth. In this video we're going to be first talking about first what is a desiccant. You may have heard this word, no idea what it actually is. Quickly run down the why people are and should be concerned with glyphosate being used over our food. Number three is is all wheat sprayed with glyphosate or other harmful chemicals and then number four what are we going to do about it? What should our response be? So first up, what is a desiccant? Now you can actually Google this and the definition can be long or very short, but the bottom line, the point of a desiccant is that it is a drying agent. Desiccants are used actually in many different things, not just in agricultural. So the other biggest desiccant that you have probably seen and not known is silica gel packs. Those little packs that come in your purses, your bags, many, many things that you buy um, that are in the packets. It says do not consume because silica gel definitely is toxic, but they keep it in those little baggies that you just throw away. So that is actually a desiccant because the point of it is just to make sure that no moisture or anything like that is in the product that you are buying. Another desiccant that you may not know is bentonite clay, which bentonite clay is not toxic. It is not harmful, but it is technically a desiccant because it can help dry things out. Now we are gonna mainly focus on desiccants in regards to agricultural because of where this channel is all about grains. And so what are desiccants used? How are desiccants used in regards to our grains? So according to BASF, which is a massive, huge chemical corporation right along up there with Dow, in case you don't know, they are definitely pro desiccants, of course, because they make it and they sell it. But we're just going by the definition of what they say of why desiccants are used in agricultural farming. And according to BAS, when an herbicide is used as a crop desiccant, it's an excellent tool for preventing weed resistance into the next growing season. Keep that in mind, that's important. It also states that crop desiccation can also be used as a strategy for accelerating the harvest process. It dries the crop, making it ready to harvest sooner. So they have many reasons why they use it, but. A few points I want to point out is that they use it to dry things. They mentioned, especially if the growing conditions have been wet, it is used to dry things. And when herbicides are used, it is used to kill things in order to help with harvesting. So as far as glyphosate goes, it technically is an herbicide, but it is used, like it's labeled, it is labeled as an herbicide, but it is used as a desiccant. So number two, why is glyphosate a concern? Why are so people concerned about glyphosate especially when it's in regards to our grains and why you should not be consuming wheat. I will go ahead and say that absolutely, it is definitely a cause for concern and we know that now. A little bit of history, glyphosate um, is also known as Roundup. That is the, uh, the product name that was invented by Monsanto back in the 1970s as an herbicide. It's basically the famous weed killer. You have probably all seen the commercials, but it's very popular because it, it does indeed works. It kills everything. Thanks to Roundup or glyphosate being invented, we now have Roundup ready soybeans and other genetically modified crops so they can just 
coat it all with glyphosate and since the crop itself has been genetically modified to withstand the herbicide it will live while everything else will die so many thanks to monsanto for inventing this and if you want to dive deep into the craziness of monsanto i do recommend the documentary the world according to monsanto very eye-opening and disturbing. But fast forward to now, so this has been out since the 1970s. The United Kingdom started using glyphosate as a desiccant on the wheat crops in the 1980s. And now fast forward to now, you probably have heard in the past few years of lawsuits that have been filed against Monsanto because despite them saying that it's perfectly safe for human beings and our wonderful government agencies also said, absolutely, Monsanto, we agree with you that it's safe for human beings. Um, it actually is not. And now it has been proven that it is cancer causing. Um, Monsanto, as of May 2022, has paid out $11 billion in lawsuit settlements because people have been suing them now that we have a connection that glyphosate causes non-Hodgkin's lymphoma among other issues as well. If you've ever heard of Agent Orange, glyphosate is not Agent Orange, but it is similar. And we already know all the crazy health issues that Vietnam vets came back with because of Agent Orange being used in the Vietnam War. Very similar with glyphosate now. So absolutely glyphosate is a concern. It messes with humans. It also messes up our pollinators, such as our bees that we desperately need for pollinating our crops. And who knows what else? it is harming and we just haven't figured it out yet. The bottom line, absolutely glyphosate and other harmful chemicals on our food is 100% a cause for concern. I definitely agree with you there. Now the big question number three, is glyphosate sprayed on all wheat? This is the one, one of the biggest reasons why people state that we should not be eating bread or consuming wheat, among other reasons, is the fact that while well, it's sprayed with glyphosate and glyphosate is harmful for you, so you should not be eating bread, thus eliminating glyphosate. Unfortunately, glyphosate is used on many other things, so not eating bread is not going to completely eliminate it from your diet, but that's another thing. Now, to scare you even further, not only is glyphosate used on wheat, but it's also used on other grains like barley and oats as well. <laughs> Yay. And another cause for concern is that a farmer may actually not use glyphosate on their grains but um, they may actually either grow something else or allow someone, another farmer, to grow a crop in their fields that they do use glyphosate with. I've actually had this confirmed recently um, from a grain company where some of their grains, some of their farmers, now this is not organic farmers, but the, some of their conventional farmers, while they themselves do not use glyphosate on their wheat, they then lease their farm fields out when it's not wheat growing season to people who grow cotton and they do use glyphosate. If you're a gardener, you do know that your soil matters. The more nutrient dense your soil is, that's gonna come in through your crop. And same thing, whatever garbage you got in your soil, it can come through and be in the crop that you are growing. But a actually surprising fact, whenever I looked into this, because I wanted to know how common this is, especially here in the United States, but in other parts of the world as well. And this was actually a big surprise. According to Wikipedia, quote, the application of glyphosate actually differs between regions and countries. And in North America, its use on wheat crops is uncommon in the US, but actually more common in Canada, which has a colder climate and shorter growing season. And then also in the United Kingdom, where summers are wet and crops may ripen unevenly, about 78% of it is desiccated before harvest, but only 4% in Germany, just as, as an example. Now, according to this Canadian article here, they actually state that glyphosate use on their crops is actually going down thanks to consumer demand, not wanting glyphosate used on their wheat. So yay, Canadians, keep it up. Now that I've scared you thoroughly, <laughs> do know just because a farmer is not organic, does not mean that they are automatically using glyphosate. I do know of conventional farmers out there that while they're not organic, they do not use glyphosate on, your, on their wheat. Which leads us to the fourth point that I want to make today, which is what are we to do about this? Unfortunately, human beings have decided long ago to play God, um, thinking that they could just mess with a bunch of chemicals and improve on God's design. So here we are, we have thousands of chemicals in our environment um, we already know of several of them that are just extremely harmful to humans, but 
Unfortunately, we can't just go out and eradicate glyphosate from our entire world. It, it's here to stay, unfortunately. What I do want to say is do not fear. While we do live in a fallen world, God is amazing in that he has created some amazing foods to help us combat this. And we also still have other options as well. The biggest thing that we can do <laughs> to avoid glyphosate in our food is to know your farmer. Know your farmer and know what questions to ask your farmer. The beauty of milling our grains and baking our bread is we actually do not need the grocery store anymore when it comes to our grains. We are able to buy grains directly from the farmer. They grow it, they clean it, and we can get it straight from them, no middleman. Which actually leads us to talk about today's sponsor, and that is Four Generations Organic Farms. One of the huge issues that I have with desiccants glyphosates, chemicals in general, or just whatever you're using on your crops is that it's going to get into your soil. Your soil matters when you are growing things and it can also stay there for a while. The great thing about Four Generations Organic Farms is they are a family farm that has been on the same plot of land since the late 1800s. And they not only believe in not using glyphosate and other harmful chemicals, but they thoroughly believe in regenerative farming and rotating their crops and taking care of their soil to maximize the nutrients in their soil, just thus maximizing the nutrients in their grains. And on a personal note, I'm very thankful that they have somehow come up with a mug that holds both hot and cold liquids and doesn't cost $50. If you know, you know. Another cool thing is that they have estate grown wheat berries as well. They have kind of their own varieties. So if you're looking for those hard reds, hard wheats, they are really good and they are clean wheat berries. So if you're wanting to buy your grains from someone that you know takes care of their soil, their fields, their crops, never uses glyphosate, other harmful chemicals or harmful desiccants, or GMOs, then be sure to check out Four Generations Organic Farms. Just go to grainsandgrit.com slash four generations. I'll have it here and then link below and use the code grains and grit for 10% off your order. Thank you so much to Four Generations Organic Farms for sponsoring today's video. All right, so let's piggyback on that, on the point of knowing your farmer. Here's a few things that you need to know about. First of all, if they are organic farmers, they cannot be using glyphosate or other harmful chemicals on their property or in their, and especially in their crops in order to be considered organic. The longer they have been farming organically, the better, because that allows the soil to heal and to just get better over time. Now, if you do find a farmer that is conventional, they, or they're just not labeled as organic, here's a few questions that you need to ask. First of all, you need to ask them if they use desiccants. If so, what kind? Specifically, do they use glyphosate? Do they rotate their fields? And the sneaky one that you need to ask is, when they're not growing whatever grain that they're growing, what other crops are grown in their field? Do those crops use glyphosate or any other harmful desiccants? Because again, whatever's used on your crops goes into the soil and it's gonna be there for some time. Overall, I do recommend buying orga organic grains, especially your organic wheats, barley, and your oats. And thankfully, when you're buying grains in bulk, they're already, pretty affordable as it is. And it's one of those organic foods that, yes, you pay a little bit extra to receive organic, but not crazy amounts. It's not four times the amount. Sometimes it's just a little bit more. All depends on the type of grain you're getting. Hopefully this was a helpful video for y'all and helped clear it up the air and answer some questions when it comes to glyphosate used on our wheat and on our grains. The biggest takeaway is to remember that your dollars are the best voting machine out there. So be sure to support those farmers like Four Generations Organic Farms that do not use harmful chemicals like glyphosate and other desiccants that are harmful not only to us, but also to the soil and to our fellow pollinators and just our environment in general, because that's what the free market is. If no one's buying it, they're gonna change their ways. If you're looking for other helpful videos, especially those dispelling a lot of myths in regards to wheat, be sure to check this one out here and subscribe if you have not already. And I will see y'all next week. Bye.